Okay, I get the hype. You've seen all of the tweets, you've seen all the YouTube videos, you want to learn how to do programming and you want to get starting building micro SaaS products. Now, what's a micro SaaS product? Just like it sounds, it's a small, relatively easy to build software as a service product. Some of mine include, for example, an allergy scanner, a small daily habits planner, or my more successful ones, a set of flashcards for various different tests around the globe. You can get all of these, by the way, inside of my WAP community in the link down below. Definitely check them out after this video. So you want to get started programming and here's exactly the roadmap that I would advise you to follow in order to get as good as possible in a short amount of time as possible. First of all, decide on cross-platform versus native mobile development. And here, there are two schools of thought. First of all, is the school of thought that says native mobile development, so Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android as two separate code bases is the best way to go. And there are some arguments for this. For example, if you want to choose to go all in on iOS, where users tend to spend a little bit more, or if you want to choose to go all in on Android because you are in a market where Android dominates and there are more Android users in the world, then it can be better to dial in on those two specific platforms. Now, if you want to do with Swift, for example, you can optimize your code and you can optimize the frameworks that you use and you can also optimize the templates that you use in your code in order to set it up to be Swift optimized. So essentially every app that you turn out will be looking good on, on Swift, it will be working well in Swift and therefore having all of the iOS native features and looks and the same goes for Android. And I think this is the main argument. You wanna dial in on one particular market because you have a very niche app that you wanna build that you know is gonna do better on one platform and you therefore want to build the best looking experience on that particular platform. I think this is the only real argument for going native. What I would encourage you to do is to go cross platform. Cross platform is when you have one code base but you develop for both iOS and Android and in some instances, maybe even the web, Windows, Linux, and Mac. There are essentially two real good choices here. React Native, which is the one by Facebook. It's built using JavaScript, essentially, and it's uh, a cross-platform mainly for web, but also for Android and iOS. Some people will say that it's mainly for iOS and Android, but come at me. And then there is Flutter. So Flutter is what I would argue the best cross-platform to learn as a beginner just because of all of the widgets that it has. Flutter gives you access to a massive, massive library of widgets that allows you to just import this into uh, your code and say maybe for example a container widget which you can then style and you can decorate and you can make it look however you want and it's relatively simple to get started with this. But yes, I would definitely get started with cross-platform because then you can release for both iOS and for Android and for other platforms too if you want to and it's also I would argue relatively easier to get started with something like Flutter compared to Kotlin. Now in these then there's two different programming languages if you choose to go with React or if you choose to go with Flutter. If you chose to go with Flutter which is the framework provided by Google then you're gonna have to learn Dart. Dart is somewhat similar to JavaScript but it's not JavaScript. If you have some experience with JavaScript it's definitely gonna be easier to learn Dart but if you're new to coding, I would say it's going to be as easy to learn Dart as it would be JavaScript. JavaScript or TypeScript is what's used in React Native. And I think this is a little bit more complex to learn as a complete beginner. It's going to take you a little bit longer to spin up a full app as a beginner using uh, React Native and JavaScript slash TypeScript. So I would definitely go with Flutter and Dart as your combo. Unless you then want to go with the native solution, which is going just Swift or just Kotlin. But Pro tip, stick to Flutter. Now, so you've decided on what programming language you want to learn. I would get started with one YouTube tutorial and after that, as soon as you can, move on to building real projects. And this is where you're gonna start as small as possible. Start super small scale. Build simple, simple, simple apps. Just maybe a simple UI with a button that you click and it prints something into the terminal. And then you graduate from that and you build something like a small calculator app, but something very, very basic, something very, very simple, so that you get the basic understanding of how the framework that you're choosing works. You should just be able to, from nothing, without using internet or anything, spin up something, something very minor, and you should know what the syntax is like, basically. You should know how it works when you compile it onto a simulator, you should know how to do that. And this is probably gonna take you four or five hours just to get the basic, basic understanding of. It's not complex, and there's a lot of good tutorials out there but get started with some small, small scale project. After this, you're gonna move on and you're gonna pick one AI tool. I would recommend you go with Cursor, but there is a bunch of other there to do some research. GitHub Copilot is also a good option. And 
just dial in on how to use this, learn how, how best the chat works, learn how to prompt it to build apps for you, and just watch some tutorials and use this to build some simple apps and see how the apps that you built manually before this, how easy they are to build using some of these AI tools. But just so you get an understanding how you can build an app with these. And now, this is gonna drive you crazy, how good it's gonna be compared to you doing these simple apps by yourself in the beginning, because it, it's gonna be so much quicker, it's gonna be so much simpler using some of these AI tools to build these apps, and it's gonna poof, blow your mind entirely. And this is then gonna be, serve as your groundwork for building these apps. Now, my next step would be to learn how to use version control. Version control is essential in order to build and release full-scale applications and software. Version control, which is the, in its most common form, is Git and is hosted on the platform called GitHub, as you've probably heard of. This is essentially where you take your code and you upload it to GitHub to one, save it, but two, also be able to track any changes that you've made. So for example, maybe you're coding away and you're working on a particular feature, it works all good on your phone, and you're like, boom, I'm gonna upload this update. You send that update, cool. Then you come back two weeks later and you start working on a new update and all of a sudden you're in this mess, your code is broken, nothing's working. If you're using source control, you're gonna be able to just go back to the last version that was working. If you're not using source control, you're stuck and you have to solve this problem. So it's a very good way, just ease of mind of being able to reverse back to what was last working and also being able to track what of your changes made what difference and what works. So make sure you use source control, set up Git, set up GitHub on your projects and use this as frequently as possible. Here you should also start to develop a basic understanding of this. You should learn the commands such as git pull, git push, commit, what all of these mean. And you should also learn basic ways to collaborate with other people in GitHub if this is something they're planning to do. But then if not, basic ways on how GitHub works and how you can fork, clone, uh, change repositories in GitHub. Next up is to get a, some understanding of data structures and algorithms. So this can be how, for example, inside of apps, how maps work, how lists work, how matching algorithms work, and then how to best store data in a database. This is something that you can use AI to help you get a recommendation on depending on the requirements of your project. But for example, in some instances, in if you're using a database, you will want to store everything in one user's table with subtables that are, for example, the platforms they have linked. And in some other ones, you will want to have one user's table and you'll have to have one platform's table. It all depends on how complex your project is going to be and how you're going to be using these different data points in relation to one another. So a good way, a good suggestion is to get started learning these data structures, these algorithms and what works when. Learn some other terms such as indexing, such as relational databases, NoSQL, etc. Next up is to learn a little bit about design patterns. So design patterns, again, this is something that you can lean on AI to quite some degree, but it should also be within your best interest to understand this. This is gonna be things such as state management. State management is how you maintain whatever is present as a top layer, so to speak, uh, in a mobile application, and how you can use this at different points throughout the application without having to fetch it again. Essentially, that is the basic version. So understand how state management works and understand the different ways of doing this. You can do this using a package called Provider inside of Flutter, for example, or you can do it using Riverpod. And I'm sure there are similar ways to manage it both within native development, but also React Native. So learn how that works. Learn how business logic components compared to UI components work. And when you start building, especially with AI, you are going to want to prompt it to use this type of structure where you have in some part of the code, you have all of the logic, you have all of the functions that fetch different types of things, you have all of the providers, you have all of the models that display how data is gonna be displayed. And in another section, you have the UI layer, which is just where you're using all of these toolkits that you built previously to display it and make it actually usable inside of the application. Learn about this and I would highly encourage you to double down on block and state management. Next up, my next point would be just to explore some of the basic functionality on the platforms that you want to upload your app. What requirements do you need to upload an app to the Apple App Store? What requirements are there to self-host a web app? What requirements are there to upload an app to the Google Play Store? Some of these things. For example, you need to have things such as a privacy policy, terms and conditions, the end user license agreement, uh, content rights setup. And this can be a little bit complex, especially the first time that you do it. I have a full walkthrough inside of my WAP community, which is gonna be linked down below on how you can do it. But there's also a ton of good resources out there on YouTube as well as on uh, Apple and Google. Learn a little bit about this, learn what you need. You need to be an Apple developer, a Google developer, 
etc and read up on what the requirements are to actually submit and upload a full functioning app. After this, I would encourage you to learn a little bit about monetization. The only real way to monetize an app in 2025 is to charge for it, either through a paywall inside of the app and a subscription, a one-time payment inside of, the, inside of the app, or a one-time payment on the App Store. Ads, you need such a tremendous volume of ads in order to get a true revenue source from that. I think this only really works inside of game apps. So if you're planning to build something that's a game, then yeah, maybe ads could work for you. But I think that the only real way to monetize an app in 2025 is going to be a paywall inside of the app. I choose not to use free trials. I think it's better if you can present the app in the onboarding. So if you have a good onboarding, a nice first experience, and then a nice paywall, you are going to encourage users to pay the first time. And I think this does increase revenue uh, quite dramatically, at least from my experiments. I would encourage you to check out the platform Revenue Cat. Again, I have a full walkthrough of this inside of my WAP community and also on this YouTube channel. But I would encourage you to learn a little bit about Revenue Cat. I've found that to be the best way to both display paywalls, but then also how to monetize your apps. They have a full walkthrough on how you do to set it up and it's relatively simple. But yeah, that it would be my first recommendation on how to approach mobile app development in 2025 and the roadmap for learning it. I would walk through each and one of those steps, starting from a very basic understanding on how you can do it yourself, to learning AI tools, to then learning a little bit more detailed about architecture, design systems, and then uploading these apps. And then I would wrap that all together into one nice package where I'm able to take a concept, I understand it, but I'm also able to use an AI tool to build and iterate on it fast. I understand what's happening and I understand the structure that's being used, but I'm able to use these AI tools in order to develop and iterate on it as fast as possible. And then with the knowledge and then actually upload it to an app store or Google Play store or self-hosted on the web and monetize it using a tool such as Revenue Cat. Those are the exact steps that I would take. I have a bunch of content similar to this. Also feel free to ask me any questions down below. You can join my WAP community free of charge. And with that, it's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, then feel free to subscribe. It's completely free of charge. And also let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.